Kevin Frank. Uh, welcome to the weekly or bi-weekly now weather update with Dr. Jeff Andreessen. So uh, Jeff, some interesting things going on right now. So uh, feel free to, to go ahead and let us know what's, what's happening in the weather world. Well, I will. I'm going to start with uh, something you probably have noticed here. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff on my title slide here. A lot of, a lot of imagery here, but uh, you probably have seen, at least at a minimum, uh, several days of very, very vivid, uh, incredibly colorful sunsets and sunrises. And, uh, and of course, the answer is, is uh, we, we have smoke in the um, upper atmosphere associated with all of the wildfires out in the western U.S. And it's, it's, uh, it's a little hard to imagine over 100 fires, uh, wildfires still burning out there. But all of the smoke this has created has, has drifted, well, more than 1,000 miles uh, to the east out into the Midwest. In the lower left here, this is a, an image courtesy of CNN, but you can see the concentration of smoke. They took two paths. Uh, one was around the northern edge from uh, basically northern California and the Pacific Northwest eastward out into the Midwest. And that's, that's what we have seen here recently over the last uh, couple days. The other, there's another southern branch of it too, you can see going around uh, through the southwest up into the Ohio Valley. But the uh, images here, these are, these are a little, a little difficult. These are called uh, an instrument called a LIDAR, and it's a, a scanner that uses light uh, to look for, in this case, changes in density and what it, what it actually is detected. And this is over at Madison, the University of Wisconsin, a unit here, uh, but it can actually see the layer. And it's, it's interesting to note that this, there is smoke there, but it's, it's still way above the surface. Uh, the vertical axis here is in kilometers. And what you can see in the left and the right-hand side here, the smoke layer here starts at about uh, four kilometers, so about two and a half miles above the surface. And it's, it's fully, um, it's several thousand meters thick or uh, several thousand feet thick, uh, but it goes up to about 10 kilometers or about six miles. So it's a big, a fairly thick layer of smoke, but it's well above the surface. And, uh, and what we see as a result here, of course, are, are very hazy, conditions. It doesn't look like we get full sun, and we're not because it's being screened out uh, here uh, before it gets down. One uh, practical part of this is, is that our, our high temperatures the last couple of days with full sun have been several degrees less than forecasted because the forecast models do not have uh, this factor. They, they ultimately could, it would be more sophisticated, but, but some of that energy is being screened out by the smoke. And so uh, yesterday we were, again, probably a good five degrees here locally cooler than it would have been otherwise just because of that smoke uh, up aloft. So uh, it's gonna be with us for another 24 to 36 hours, and then it will be escorted uh, off to the south and east of, uh, of Michigan as a cold front goes through the area, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Well, looking here in review where we've been for a significant change of pace, our temperatures for the last two weeks, so this is basically the beginning of the first 14 days or so, best first 13 days, plus the end of uh, August here. But as a change of pace, we had cooler than normal temperatures over most of the state and most of the region, especially across northern parts of the state where you can see the departures were as much as six degrees Fahrenheit below normal. That's probably, and I didn't go back to look at the specific numbers, but that's probably the coolest period we had this growing season since May. Remember we had that really, really, really cool start of the growing season in the first half of May. To get those departures, you probably have to go back that far. Uh, but even in the southern part of the state, it was still uh, at least two to four degrees below the normal. So uh, a definite change of pace from where we've been most of the growing season. Uh, and just as importantly, or even more importantly, we did have a number of weather systems uh, with a, a frontal boundary stalled out just to the south of the region with a number of waves that rode up along that. And the result here was, uh, in some cases, more than four inches of rainfall in two weeks. Uh, a lot of that fell in some of the driest areas of the state across the southern lower peninsula. There was still still that southeastern corner of the state. You can, you can just see that here uh, where we got less than, than half an inch down here right along Monroe County. And then again, that southeastern fringe, that, that area has just been uh, missed repeatedly over and over and over here uh, over the last several weeks. But a lot of other portions of the state that were unfavorably dry or, or well, in some cases worse than that, uh, received significant rainfall. And uh, I, I, had, um, I had about three and a half inches at my house 
in Hazlitt uh, just in about a, well, it was about a five day period. That was the heaviest rain we'd had uh, in, in quite a while. You can also see there were areas uh, northern parts of the state that also picked up a significant precipitation as well. So all in all, it was a fairly wet week with a couple of exceptions. Uh, again, that southeastern corner being one of those. The drought monitor, uh, this, is the, this is the current one. It goes back to last week, but it does reflect that to some extent the area of uh, abnormally dry or water drought has, has still shrunk and is, is in the process of shrinking. Now, given the forecast, we are looking at a drier pattern here coming up. Uh, it, this probably will stabilize, but it's definitely less than it has been uh, the, the amount of area impacted by drought. And this recent rainfall really changed things probably for the remainder of the growing season because we are getting now into transition and we will be seeing also cooler temperatures, less water demand. So it's getting to be that time of the year where the, the, uh, the demand for water is, uh, is steadily declining as the season goes on. Our degree day totals, given the cooler than normal temperatures, have, have fallen off a little bit, uh, but still most of the state still dealing with at least several calendar days ahead of normal due to the surpluses we built up earlier. A couple of exceptions to that way up in uh, portions of western upper Michigan, by and large, most areas still on the surplus. Our forecast here, uh, well, there's, there's a couple themes here. Uh, first off, we've got uh, another hurricane, another major hurricane down in the Gulf, or at least it was a major hurricane, and it looked yesterday uh, afternoon like we might be dealing with another, something uh, very, very unfortunate, like Laura was here several weeks ago, uh, that, that hit uh, Louisiana and, and strengthened rapidly. But Hurricane Sally yesterday came out of the eastern Gulf and just like what we saw with Laura here, again, a, a little while ago, uh, it rapidly strengthened as it moved uh, slowly to the north and west. And many of the, fork, the intensity forecasts for this event had, had kept Sally at a fairly, well, certainly a, maybe a category one, possibly a category two hurricane at best. So not a, not a big storm, but yesterday it went from uh, the maximum sustained winds went from 60 to 100 miles per hour in just uh, several hours. And we saw, again, uh, memories of, of Laura and what it did, all the damage it caused in, uh, in Louisiana on the Northern Gulf. But uh, fortunately overnight, Sally has uh, weakened. There is some shear of some winds aloft here that are, have acted to, to really keep this from really getting its act together. It doesn't have complete circulation. Most of the circulation of the storm is on the Northern fringe, which is not good news for the Gulf Coast, but it will probably keep it from intensifying much further. The bad news with this storm is it's, it's almost stationary. Uh, it's currently moving northwest uh, at, at two miles per hour, which is essentially almost due stationary, but it's expected it has been moving, drifting to the uh, west and northwest. It will recurve and then gradually drift towards the north uh, and hit the Gulf Coast, probably the southeastern corner of Mississippi or uh, southwestern corner of Alabama, uh, somewhere in the Mobile area possibly, uh, here over the next 24 hours, and then recurve to the east across the southeast. So there's no chance of that having any impact on us. But for the Gulf Coast and for the southeast, this is a, this is a huge event. And the, probably the biggest issue, uh, the coastal issue, there will be coastal flooding with this. Uh, it does have 85 miles per hour currently. It might strengthen maybe a little bit. Uh, before it makes landfall here tomorrow. But uh, the big issue I think with this is, is water. And uh, just, it's moving so slowly that there are areas that are gonna be repeatedly uh, dumped on with heavy rains. And I'll show you the precip forecasting coming up. They're gonna have to go in double digits uh, for inches of, of rainfall. And so we're likely looking at a pretty widespread flood event with, with Sally being the, the primary uh, impact. So that's, that's the major, I guess, on you look on the weather map. The other, I guess, more positive news is it's a little bit better out in the far west. Conditions are let, not quite as intense or extreme as they have been over the past and hopefully allow firefighters to get a little bit of a handle. But things are still, there's a really, really difficult situation in the western U.S. There is moisture just off the coast. You can see some of that maybe making it into the far uh, northwest. That should help. Even increasing humidities will, will help a great deal uh, to, uh, to slow things down. For us though, look, there's a lot of white, not much color at all. We've got a weak uh, low pressure system moving from west to east across the region with a little warm front here. Uh, and I'll, I'll, 
I'll show you, we, we are looking, at, for most of the state, we're looking at an extended period of dry weather. I think that's one of the major themes here uh, with, with a fair amount of confidence. The northern part of the state would be an exception to that. Here's tomorrow morning, you can see one cold front making it through, and then there's a second one behind that. Now, behind that, there's a, there's a fairly large high pressure center up here in Saskatchewan uh, tomorrow morning. That is, that's a truly Canadian air mass. And so the next big weather change that we'll be looking at uh, here will be associated with that system. Uh, but first, ahead of this front, we will see our winds shift around to the south and southwest here over the next 12 to 24 hours and become a little bit gusty uh, before this cold front makes its way through. Uh, and then the second uh, cold front makes its way through. I mentioned dry conditions. There is a chance that we could, this front could set off a few scattered showers, primarily across the northern part of the state, the UP, maybe the northern lower, uh, but we're talking maybe 20, 30 percent pops, uh, or probability of precipitation, and, and light, uh, let, probably less than, certainly less than a quarter of an inch, if then. Most of the state will remain dry. Uh, tomorrow will be our warmest day of, uh, of, of the uh, week, probably uh, maybe as much as 80 degrees in the south before the front makes its way through and then we're, we're on the way down uh, temperature wise after that. So uh, we will be today, we'll also be fairly fairly mild. Uh, again, despite the, the haze, I, I think we'll probably make it up into the low and mid 70s in many areas in the south, but we'll do five degrees better than that probably tomorrow. There's also a chance I mentioned the smoke, uh, given some mixing going on aloft, we might see some of that smoke get down to the surface tomorrow. So don't be surprised if you, you smell some of the uh, some of the smoke from that that smoke layer above. Uh, if if it does get down near the surface, uh, to tomorrow would be the day that that occur. After that, uh, we're gonna the, that Canadian air is gonna move that and push everything uh, to our south. So here's Thursday morning. You can see that both of those fronts have cleared. Uh, unfortunately for the southeast, Sally, even almost 48 hours later, is is not, not more than maybe 150 miles from where it is now. Uh, virtually no movement, and all this area is going to, the heavy rain will continue there for the next, well, as much as maybe 72 hours. And then in comes this Canadian high pressure. So after the warm day tomorrow, uh, warmer than normal, temperatures will crash a full 20 degrees on Thursday uh, behind the front. And we will likely, not in the northern part of the state, probably won't make it to 60 on Thursday. Uh, and many spots on, on uh, Friday, uh, be looking at highs in the 50s uh, and, and not even make it to 60. The other part of this, of course, on the other end of our daily cycle, our minimum temperatures are going to fall from 50s here uh, tonight uh, into the 30s and 40s by, by Thursday and continue on to the weekend. So it's going to be an unusually or abnormally cool late week and weekend at this point in time. And with this uh, center of this air mass over the Great Lakes region, we have to say there's going to be a risk of frost and or freezing temperatures, especially in northern parts of the state. And right now, best chances of the biggest, I think the greatest risk of frost, probably Saturday morning, but right now I would say Friday, Saturday, uh, and probably Sunday morning, we will have that threat. Again, especially interior areas of, uh, of the UP and even down into central lower Michigan, we, we might see if it does uh, completely get still and calm, uh, we might see some frost there as well. The first, that would be the first of the season there. We have had freezing temperatures in, uh, in sections of upper Michigan with a cold air mass uh, here a, a week ago, but uh, it would be the first frost in, in many portions of uh, northern lower Michigan. So keep an eye on that. It's still several days out, but right now, given this synoptic setup and given this, where this air mass is from, again, that's uh, high latitudes of, of North America, cool, dry air, uh, that's that's usually the recipe that you you uh, you don't like to see this time of year, at least uh, uh, this time of the year in the transition. But there will be a risk. I'll show you a graphic here in just a, a little bit. Uh, precipitation. Look at our look at our map here. This is uh, through next Tuesday morning uh, for much of Michigan. No precip. It's, it's expected to be dry. We don't we don't see that too often. Have a completely dry week. Matter of fact, uh, one could probably make the point that. Uh, given the numerical forecast guidance in central and southern parts of the state, there may not be any precipitation until late next week. So we're going through probably an extended period without uh, any rainfall. But on the other hand, it will be it will be cooler than normal at least for uh, the middle part of this from Thursday through the end or the end of the weekend. There will be moderating temperatures probably after that, 
back up to at least normal levels. And then as we look at the medium range, that suggests another change, at least more uh, milder temperatures after that. Note also here to our south, again, it's just incredible, the uh, double digits of, of rainfall across the southeast. Uh, you can see the oranges here. That's, that's uh, in excess of 10 inches of, of rain, which nobody, uh, doesn't matter where you are, no system is built for that type of thing. So they're looking at some probably some fairly widespread flooding across the southeast. And you can see, look at the, uh, the intense gradient here from north to south, from uh, inundating heavy, heavy rain to basically almost nothing. So the northern edge of this, there's going to be a really, really sharp drop off of precipitation. Uh, and none of that moisture makes it up here, which is why, again, why the upper Midwest and, and Michigan will remain dry. There's just virtually no water vapor to work with. Our potential evapotranspiration rates here through next week, uh, they're going to be front loaded. Uh, we're going to probably see 13 to 15 hundredths of an inch here over the next couple days, and then that falls off to a tenth of an inch or less as we move into, into the late part of the week, work week, and in the weekend with the cooler temperatures. And you can see the weekly totals here generally ranging from about eight to nine tenths of an inch. So definitely in decline, and that reflects again the change in uh, the, the cooler towards cooler temperatures. Here's the minimum temperature forecast right now for Saturday, uh, the 19th. Uh, so this would be overnight Friday into Saturday. Uh, and uh, you can see some, a couple sub-freezing temperatures here. There's one up here at, uh, at Grayling, 31 degrees indicated. But anytime you see this in the guidance, you, you have to say that there might be some areas, especially those that are, that are sheltered or low-lying areas or that are on sandy, uh, well-drained soils. Those are the spots that we, we typically see to be the first ones to get frost in or freezing temperatures. And, and certainly the threat will, will likely be there. And my guess is, again, right now, at least three nights, uh, Friday night or Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night would be the, uh, would be the greatest threat with, with uh, Friday night, Saturday probably being the coldest of the low. Although stay tuned, it's still a few days out, but it definitely is, uh, is a threat for us, and, and it would be the first of the season uh, in, in many of those areas. Looking into the medium range, uh, there are some additional changes uh, noted. One is that, uh, I, I think the biggest one is the upper air forecast is for a much less amplified. Uh, the low, smaller amplitude troughs, there's still a trough out over the northern Pacific here uh, and a, a bit of a ridge over the west, that's not good for the fire situation. And then sort of a, a weak trough over the east, but nowhere near what we've seen here recently and what we're likely to see over the next couple of days, there'll be a big trough over the Great Lakes. Uh, so as this uh, jet stream sort of relaxes and becomes more zonal or west to east, we should see a moderation in temperatures. And that's what you see here. This is the uh, eight to 14 day outlook. Uh, six to 10 day outlook is very, very similar to this. You can see uh, milder, warmer than normal temperatures here and to the west and then cooler to the uh, east. But the other big theme and maybe more, uh, more of a theme, uh, both of these outlooks suggest below normal precip totals. And that, that definitely is what shows up in the forecast guidance that I have seen. So uh, we're looking at dry conditions in the near future and probably for the next couple of weeks, uh, just not many chances for precipitation. That's, that's a bit of a change from what we had seen a week ago or even two weeks ago, but definitely trending drier than normal is, is what most of the, the forecast is, uh, is suggesting direction-wise right now. So summarizing here, we've got uh, about another one to two days of, of the hazy conditions with the, the smoke aloft here. Uh, with relatively mild temperatures too. And then the cold front goes through uh, late Wednesday into Thursday and brings a major change. And uh, we end the week uh, cool or abnormally cool and uh, we'll call it seasonable or seasonably cool or worse uh, and, uh, and, and dry. The other dry uh, is, is another word that goes through almost all of the, uh, all of the outlooks here. Our temperatures falling back from daytime readings in the uh, 70s and maybe even 80 tomorrow. Uh, back to the 50s. So it's going to be a big change. Uh, and just as importantly, nighttime temperatures will be down into the 30s and 40s into uh, the weekend with the probability or possibility, once again, of frost uh, as we move towards the, the weekend. There will be moderating temperatures next week uh, and probably no chance, the next chance for any precipitation, not until the latter part of, of next week as it's looking right now. And uh, the, as you just saw with the medium range, uh, drier than normal conditions still expected to continue on into late 
September, but with, uh, with warmer temperatures than we're going to be, uh, be looking at here in the next week. So I'll wrap up there and, and, uh, and see if there's any questions or any, any comments. Kevin, it's all yours. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, once again, kind of continuing our theme for 2020, a little bit of everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Smoke, smoke, hurricanes, and frost, yeah. and all in one weather <laughs> forecast. And well, it's it's interesting. Many of these, and these are some pretty serious weather issues. Again, we, you've you've probably seen the footage out west. It's this is something extreme uh, with with and that doesn't even do it justice. Uh, and then the the hurricane in the south, and here we are in the upper Midwest or in the Great Lakes, and it's it's very very quiet by comparison. I, I think most people would probably take that, but you don't have to you don't have to look very far to see uh, to see examples of uh, very very abnormal conditions. Absolutely. Well, well, we'll continue to kind of enjoy this uh, cooler but uh, dry weather pattern we have right now as uh, we get closer and closer to official fall. So thanks, Jeff. We'll, we'll uh, check bet. back with you in a couple weeks again. So thanks for your time. You bet. We'll see you too.